Hey guys, hi. Uh, so I had put a couple of questions on my Instagram, my friendly, and then uh, the, I'll also tell you what were the questions. I the questions were what do I have to teach next, and I had put the question one Ableton overview. The question two has what is equalization. Question three has what is compressor, and question four has Ableton overview, and uh. The majority of pe the people wanted to know of what is equalization, so I thought I could teach you, you know, equalization in depth. But also, I also want to let you know that the complete equalization can't be taught in a single video, and I'm a sort of person who just shows it straight to what the question is and not talk about the unrelated, you know, stuffs. So I'll just show you two filters, which is what is low cut. And what is high cut? And the other names for this is low cut, high pass, and high cut, low pass. And for whoever is seeing this DAW for the first time, this is Ableton. So I have Ableton Live Nine Suit, which is a licensed one. And most of y'all have different DAWs such as Logic, Reaper, Audacity. You know, Adobe Premium for sound. It doesn't matter. Equalization is the same for all the AWs. No matter it's a software or live mixing consoles or even an analog EQ for that case. It is all the same. Low cut is very simple. It just cuts the low. High cut is again very simple. It's there in the terminology itself, which just cuts the high. And I will show you why we use these sort of filters, and I will also give you a brief explanation of what are the different types of filters in EQ present, and I will explain them in depth in the next video. Uh, but before that, most of the people have to understand what is DAW. DAW is nothing but Digital Audio Workstation, and why is this terminology even arrived? Because anything you work. Under a digital medium, using an audio file is called digital audio workstation. As simple as that. Any audio files that you work under digital medium is your digital audio workstation. And what is workstation? Workstation is the place where you sit and work. Could be anything. For an IT person, his workstation is his office, and for a barber, his workstation is his barber place. And it's the same for us as well. For music producers, sound engineers, it could be your studio. For music producers, majorly it's your DAW, which is the software you sit and work. So that's why you know it's digital audio workstation. Any audio files which you work under digital medium is digital audio workstation. And these DAWs are are being manufactured and have been released by various companies. Like the one which I use is Ableton. I see a lot of people using Logic. I see a lot of people using Pro Tools. I see a lot of people using Reaper. I see a lot of people using various other like Adobe and etc. But it is all the same as far as I know. It is nothing like you know. I use this specifically because this is better than the other DAW, and I use. That because it is better than the one which you use. It's nothing like that. It always depends on the person who's using it and not the DAW by itself. Because according to me, it is what we do in the DAW rather than what the DAW is about. So I, if you ask what are the DAWs I use, I use Ableton, I use Logic, I use Pro Tools. So you know the reasons is I tend to not forget the other DAWs as well. So I produce in Ableton, mix, master in Logic, and if I have to do the final steps of mixing or mastering, I use it in Pro Tools. I do it in Pro Tools, and for vocal tuning, pitching. Podcast editing, audio editing. I use Pro Tools because I kind of I'm I'm kind of used to it, but it it is all the same. I can do the same in Ableton as well. I can do the same in Logic itself. I've done projects where I've produced, mix, mastered in just one project using Ableton and no other DAWs. You know, specifically used for those kind of you know projects. So that's a part of it. So let's get into EQing. Before that, I want to show you where you find EQing in DAW. Of Ableton, so you have sound, drums, instruments, audio effects, MIDI effects, Maxwell Live plugins, clips, samples, 
and most of them get confused with plugins because yes EQ is a sort of a VSTI which is a plugin but this plugin is for your external plugins in Ableton it is not for your internal stock plugins what do I mean by stock plugins stock plugins are nothing but which is being produced by the manufacturer itself so Ableton has come out with its own you know VSTs and VSTIs which I will explain what is VST and VSTI is in, in a short brief again. But then the stock plugins of Ableton are nothing but anything that is being produced by Ableton are its Ableton stock plugins. Uh, for the ones who know about all this, pardon me, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm explain. I just want to make sure that even the persons who do not understand all of these terminologies really understand of what it is. Uh, so go to AudioFX. AudioFX is where you'll find all all the uh give me one sec i'm sorry yeah so ableton you know ableton stock plugins are all settled in the audio fx which is over here and right now you see bunch of the audio fx over here there's something called amp which gives you a certain emulation of amp sounds auto filters audio effect and so on your compressors all all of the stock you know plugins are all situated here now in eq there are two types of eq which you see here one is eq8 and one is eq3 first let me explain you what is eq3 the moment you drag and drop it on a midi you see l stands for low n stands for mid and h stands for high which is nothing but this eq is only divided into three bands and what is this bands and where is it divided for example uh, you have a certain frequency and if most of y'all know that human hearing can hear only from 20 to 20,000 Hertz and that 20 to 20,000 Hertz also depend on human ears, their age and their ability to hear most of the people who are old enough cannot hear all the frequencies and people who are young and you know who's still in their mid teen you know they can probably hear most of the frequencies better than the old age people and of course producers and engineers like us should be able to hear more better than these people so this band is divided by three you know low mid and high but this eq is majorly used in dj consoles where you know people use it to beat match and then all they want to know is you know cut the lows and get the kick high and then beat match it and then you know get it back so it is used for very simple stuff this is not the eq which i would recommend y'all to use it while you are eqing your instruments in particular tracks so just wanted to show you what it is so that you guys don't get confused now i want y'all to go click on eq8 you can either double click it it just automatically comes in select the midi track and double click it or just to make sure that you specifically put the eq here just drag and drop it now if you see here you have eight bands of filters five six seven and eight you have eight filters technically which are divided into eight bands and all i'm gonna show you right now is only your high cut low pass and your low cut and high pass and i'll also explain you now what are the different sorts of frequencies in an imaginary way let me just go and get a sample first i usually love to explain it in your grand piano <laughs> with that yeah okay like this so now i'm just gonna make a loop so that all of you hear what exactly it sounds like sure what it is now let's tell that you know i want to cut the lows of this frequencies let's play it first and if you see the frequency actually starts 
somewhere from your 60 hertz and nothing is there below that and now i want to cut everything that is less than 60 hertz S reasons like that and situations like that you use a low cut a low cut is nothing but it cuts the low frequencies which you see it here i'll just expand it more a low cut is nothing but with cuts the low frequencies and lets your high frequency pass through and it's the same opposite of high cut a high cut is nothing but it cuts the high frequencies and lets your low frequencies pass through and in your low and high there are two types of filter one which is got a curvy curvy cut and the other one is a very sharp cut it depends on your call absolutely this is something which as a producer you should decide on and i cannot tell you when to use a you know sharp cut and when to use a curvy cut so it is absolutely your call but whenever you take a call please make sure that you listen to it because all of these eqs in the daws right now are being super fancy and you can see the frequencies and everything but again at the end of the day you should listen to your ear and not what you see because that is what is most important as a music producer or a sound engineer so now i'm gonna stick to this curve cut and more than being a notch cut and so that is what your low and high frequency does now what is this which is you know a shelving eq a shelving eq is nothing but for example uh, let's say that anything which is less than 200 hertz i need it to be attenuated by 6 dv and the terminology attenuation means decreasing i just want to decrease all of the frequencies that is less than 200 hertz by 6 db or 5 db you can't do that with your low cut because your low cut literally cuts everything less than 200 hertz if you want to do it but i just want to get it attenuated by 6 db now click your shelving eq go to 200 hertz you can type it if you wanna just to be specific numbers 200 hertz and now my one is exactly at 200 hertz if you can see it over here this bar is exactly at 200 hertz and i'm gonna choose the shelving eq and i'm gonna cut it by 6 db now if you see anything that is less than 200 hertz is got a gradual cut of 6 db and it is throughout the cut it is very stable it, it it does not have any boosts or cut in between it is just 6 db cut and it is giving you a 6 db cut you cannot see anywhere 1 db cut or 2 b 2 db cut or there is a boost plus 2 db or 3 db so this is what a shelving eq does and you have the same for even the high frequencies just choose the other side of the shelving eq and then you can have a cut it's the same you just have an opposite which is called low shelving eq and high shelving eq and so now if i play it let me just play it and explain it to you so that you understand in depth i hope you can make the difference right now what it does when you cut it gradually for almost for almost 8 dB now you get back the sound now you can see the difference so I hope you just made out the distance the differences and also the the I'm just doing it in a very intensive manner of cutting it for 10 dB and so plus just to make sure that you guys make it out because I'm still not sure how it's going to sound for you when you play it back. So that is why I'm doing it a little intensive. But I'm pretty damn sure you are never supposed to cut anything for 10 dB unless and until it's really required. So please don't do that mistake. I'm just showing it for the base basics of because I just want you to understand what I do actually. And I hope you make out the difference. Now let's play the sample and do it for high. This is with EQ, without EQ, with EQ, without EQ. So that's what your shelving does and uh, now there is another, the most important filter I would say in anyone's you know life. According to me, I think this is the most important filter which is called a bell filter. 
so a bell because it kind of looks like a bell if you see it here it kind of looks like a bell and what does this do for example i hear some ringing noise in the piano which i'm not liking it because when i'm trying to increase the volume the frequency of that ringing or the resonating frequency is also getting increased i have to cut it and how are you going to cut it you cannot cut it with a low cut or high cut or with your high shelving eq or low shelving eq because low cut cuts everything that is low high cut cuts everything that is high and your shelving eq cuts everything gradually but it does not cut at one particular place now i'm going to increase or decrease at one particular hertz say i'm going to play it now you see i we didn't like that uh, ringing noise i didn't like that ringing noise so what i'm going to do is i am going to make it even more narrow so how do you do it narrow and the reason why you do it narrow is now if you want to boost something and you want to boost it only in 1 kilohertz which is 1000 so i'm just going to move this third i'm just going to deactivate everything so that you just see that so i'm just going to click on this type in 1000 so it exactly goes at the 1k kilohertz and you want to increase it by 3 db i'm going to go to the gain increase it by 3 db but the moment you increase you see that the frequency which is from 300 to your 2 kilohertz is getting increased the reason why is being increased from there to your 2 kilohertz is because your q factor is too broad i'm going to increase my q factor so that it narrows down to just that frequency which you want to boost and why do we use the q factor the q factor is basically nothing but it just lets you the amount of how broad your eq band filter should be or how narrow your eq band filter should be as simple as that there are multiple reasons why would you want to keep it broad or why would you want to keep it narrow for anything if you want to cut i would suggest you to keep it narrow because i don't want you to cut every all the frequencies which is not even necessary to be cut so in that case you just lose all the fundamental frequencies of your track so now i have narrowed it as much as possible i'm going to play before you take any call play and listen and then decide or you know take a call repeat what i said if you guys didn't hear it over it when the piano was playing as you saw or heard you just heard that ringing noise all i did was i just boosted it up to a like 10 db i just swiped sweeped it you know at at a place where i hear that ringing frequencies and i got it down by 3 db whenever you're cutting do not cut more than 3 or 4 db because you're just cutting because that ringing frequency also shows a characteristics you know it just gives like a salt and pepper to your sample or your instrument so you do not want to cut it too much more which is more than like 4 db or 5 db so just cut it by 3 db or so and i think that should do it for you for now if i play i don't hear that ringing noise actually and i've cut it only by 3.1 db so that is what your bell eq does it literally cuts or if you want some frequency see for example just gonna narrow it i can like the frequencies that is playing here so i'm just gonna boost it by 3 db again again when you're boosting it it's si- follow the same principle do not boost it more than 3 or 4 db because it just doesn't make sense because you would not just want this particular frequency to sound more louder than the other frequencies in that case you again lose the other fundamental frequencies to fall back which you do not want to do it so just boost it by 3 or 4 db just adding like a salt and pepper to your curry and that's about it and so that's your bell you know filter now let's go back to where we actually want to go uh so i want to explain what is your low frequency and why do we use it and f- to show that let me go to my low frequency and i'm going to choose this low frequency cut 
i'm going to turn off my all my other bands and i'm going to leave it somewhere here now i'm going to play the sample if you see when i played the sample my frequency actually started from here anywhere from here to here and there was nothing you know playing other than the lower rumble frequencies in, there were only lower rumble frequencies in the box which i've highlighted now but anything which had to do with the fundamental frequencies was from here to here so technically i do not want these frequencies because i want to create room for my other instruments which is present in the project i just i just don't have my grand piano present in the project i also have violins i also have my kick drum i also have my vocals you know so i just want to create some space for the other instruments and that's the main reason why you know you use eqing is eqing is nothing but you know shaping out your frequencies and cancelling out the unwanted frequencies that is what a simple eq is meant to do there are also a couple of other intense eqing which will be used on your you know master buses and mix buses which we i will explain you in the upcoming videos but for now i just want you to know what a basic simple eqing is being used in every track every track it's just been used to cut out the unwanted frequencies and creating space for your other elements now i'm just going to play it and i'm going to swipe it and you're going to see where my ac the actual piano starts and another small tip or trick is when you come to your eq you see an headphone button here right next to your frequency spectrums button you see your headphone button click that what this does it it solos your band for example when i click on this band it is only gonna let me listen to whatever is playing under that particular filter band let us try that if you can actually hear my fundamentals are actually starting from here so anything less than that sorry so anything less than that is i just don't need that because it's just cre it's it's all that lower rumble and i do not want a lower rumble to be created out of a grand piano but instead i want that lower rumble to be created out of my bass line or even my you know kick drum but i definitely don't want it to be created by my grand piano because if you've just got too much of lower rumble in your project your entire project will sound muffled and it will not sound good so and that is the reason why i want to use this and cut out those unwanted frequencies we'll do the same for high i'm just going to create an high i'm going to play i'm swiping and i think i can hear the fundamentals from here so now like i said there is there is pretty much nothing you know past this it's it's just very you know see it, the highs always it depends on people's call but i would suggest you to just cut the lows as much as possible just remove those rumble frequencies because just the most problematic you know frequencies which you will face during your mix and master you can always deal with the highs using a multi band compressor or you know a limiter and you know compressor using multiple you know there are multiple plugins to deal with the highs but there are also plugins to deal with the lows but through my personal experience it is always better to cut out the lower you know rumble frequencies as you go with your production work and this is the main reason why we use a low and a high cut and i hope you guys all understood please do let me know you know if you have any questions and also i am pretty damn sure that i didn't do it in an expertized way because this is the first time i'm doing something like this so i'm sorry if if i didn't make sense to most of them or if i didn't do it in a right way just give me some time i'll get used to it and give you all you know videos which is much more interesting than what it is right now but and i am also sure that i didn't lag and talk about unwanted stuff and i was to the mark and to the point so thank you so much for this please share like subscribe and i will take it from here have a nice day stay home stay safe thank you